Before I started digging through the Game Boy and Game Boy Color library, I originally thought the only good Game Boy games were Nintendo first party titles like Pokemon, the Super Mario Land series, Tiny Toons Adventures, Bad Big Break, and a few others here and there. Upon a further dive into the library, I found a few other good games like Lufia, The Legend Returns, and now Kid Dracula. Kid Dracula is one of those games that is deceptive in what it is. It may look like a kiddie version of Castlevania, but it might surprise you not only how good it is, but in how hard it is. The development is somewhat interesting. It was developed and published by Konami and released to the Game Boy in March of 1993. The interesting thing about this game isn't about the company who made the game, but the history around it. Kid Dracula is the sequel to a game called Boku Dracula Kun for the Famicom. The game was kind of a cutesy spin-off of the Castlevania series and was only released in Japan. Fundamentally, it's the same game except for a few things that the Game Boy game fixed in its mechanics. I will say that the levels are a lot bigger in Boku Dracula Kun than in Kid Dracula. This is the only thing that Boku Dracula Kun does better. Kid Dracula, however, fixed how far backwards you were sent when you took damage and in general has a lot more polish. Sadly, after Kid Dracula, we never saw another spin-off in this style ever again. Making matters worse was that a lot of people who worked on Boku Dracula Kun went on to have productive careers with Konami, while the guys who worked on Kid Dracula only worked on a few more games before fading away. It's a shame, because Kid Dracula was actually a good game. The story is very minimal. Garamoth has returned and it's up to Kid Dracula to stop him once again. However, he seems to have forgotten most of his spells and many of his minions have turned against him to join Garamoth. Luckily for him, Death remains by his side, gives him tips and heirlooms from his father Dracula throughout the game. Hey, even though game only gives you three QT cinematics to tell the story, it's more than what the Famicom gives you. The graphics are decent enough for the Game Boy. It looks like the equivalent of a Game Boy sequel to the Famicom game, and that's all you can really ask for. That said, its levels look good. Levels have a fair bit of detail, character designs look cute as hell, and overall, it's a decent looking game. On the other hand, the levels feel small. Levels are chopped up into bite-sized chunks, and while characters look bigger on screen than in the Famicom version, Kid Dracula's levels are small in scale, and the characters feel squeezed in. I think this is more due to hardware of the Game Boy, and it isn't really that big of a deal. The audio design is also fairly well done. The music is pretty good. Konami had consistently designed pretty good music in the 8 and 16 bit eras, and Kid Dracula is no different. Tracks are upbeat, fun, and feel more like it's parodying games like Castlevania more than anything. It also fits the whole kitty look and feel to the game. While it's not as good as some of the Castlevania games, it stands on its own merits. The gameplay is good. This is just another solid platforming game that happens to have come out on the Game Boy. I will warn you that if you play this expecting a Castlevania game, then you're going to be disappointed. The game is fundamentally a 2D action platform game more along the lines of games like Mega Man than Castlevania. You go from level to level, jumping from platform to platform, and attacking enemies with your spells. At the end of each level, you fight a boss and are rewarded with a new spell if you defeat him. Each spell has its own attack pattern or purpose and you will utilize them all at one point or another. Pretty standard stuff for a Mega Man style game. You also get a few mini games you can play with the coins you earned in the levels so you can get more lives. The mini games aren't anything to write home about but it does add variety to the game. As for the levels themselves, they are designed with a lot of care. Every level feels like it was designed to take advantage of the newest spell you got. This tries to add variety to the levels, but it comes off feeling more like a standard Mega Man game at times. They are also fairly challenging. Much like Lone Nemo the Dream Master, don't let the cute look and how easy the first two levels are fool you. The game might start off easy, but it gets hard in a hurry. This is a challenging game that eases you into the game's mechanics, then challenges your problem-solving skills at every chance it gets. The bosses, on the other hand, are somewhat pushovers for the most part. Every boss will start off with one form, but will surprise you with a secondary form you have to kill, and will try to fake you out with a last second shot to try to take you down. While they are challenging, there's only really one or two patterns to look out for for you to defeat them. The controls are good, but not great. Running around and casting spells feel really responsive. Rarely did I ever feel like the game screwed me out of a jump because of the controls. My only real problem is how much airtime you get when jumping. You spend so much time in the middle of a jump that it feels like you're on the moon at points. This can lead to cheap hits and deaths. Another problem is that the hit detection is a little suspect. Since you are such a big target on screen, you will at times be hit by stuff that is no way should be considered a hit. This can cause unneeded frustration and again, cheap deaths. It's not as bad as I heard it was in Boku Dracula Kun, but that's for you to judge. I haven't really played it all that much. 
My only other minor problem with the game is that this is a really short game. The game lasts around 8 levels and I wish there was more content to it. Considering that this is a Game Boy game, I like Slide because of how much memory they had to work with at the time. Now don't get me wrong, this game is a challenging game for all the right reasons. Every mistake you make is 90% of the time your own fault. There are just a few hiccups that keep it from being great. I definitely think it's a good enough game for fans of Mega Man to get some enjoyment and a decent challenge out of. Overall, Kid Dracula surprised me. I thought this game was going to be garbage and yet it has enough cute designs for 8 to 10 year old kids to enjoy and it's tough enough for people like me that grew up with games like this to get some fun out of. I will warn you that Kid Dracula isn't that cheap. It goes for around $40 Canadian and hasn't seen a Nintendo eShop release yet. It's not good enough that I can justify the price for it, but it's good enough that if you see it at a local shop, definitely give it a shot. I give it an 8 out of 10.